Good morning, die harders. Who's ready to live free or die hard? This is the SW Experience, and I am the Shogun. And here we go. On this episode of SW Experience Reviews, I will, the Shogun will be reviewing the recently released Halloween Kill Kill Kills, uh, featuring Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what the vibe of the movie is like okay this is, as always we begin with a non-spoiler review and then we dive into spoiler filled territory so yeah let's get into it man let's 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 get after it um personally on a personal level i would very much like to give this movie a 3.6 out of 5 stars you know, you know, that's basically a 7.2 out of 10 knives right there, man. Okay, 10, 7.2 out of 10 jack-o'-lanterns, yeah. A 7.2 out of 10 jack-o'-lanterns, because, oh, here's why. Um, the third act saved the day, man. The third act saves the day. It's everything you'd want in a Halloween movie and then some. That third act, man, it saved what was up until that point. A pretty, pretty, pretty nonsensical horror movie. I mean, as a horror movie, it works. I mean, it works as a horror movie, like an original story or whatever. But it does not work as a Halloween movie. Because, you know, I mean, Halloween 3, the original, tried to do turn Halloween into an anthology series and stray away from Michael Myers, but that wasn't what people wanted. People saw Halloween 3 and like, hey, where's Michael? Where, where Michael Myers at? But nope, no Michael Myers. In this third one, there was very little Michael Myers. And, um, okay, no spoilers. Uh, the cast was great. Uh, they did, they, they they, hey, what they were dealt, they did it to the best of their abilities. Um, the relationship between Will Patton and Jamie Lee Curtis was, you know, it, it was nice, you know. I'm glad, you know, they were pleasant with each other, you know. I'm glad they seem to have a thing going on. <laughs> if YouTube copyright strikes me for that, I am definitely going to claim that shit. Like, I'm going to complain about that. Like, you can't complain my... You can't cover a strike my fucking vocals. Just, anyway, moving on. <laughs> hey, that's my fuck for... The, that's my first fuck. Let's go, dude. That's the first fuck. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, 7.2 out of 10. You know, the uh, music was good. Uh, Michael was used uh, pretty realistically. I'm going to give any, if give a movie any kind of props. It was pretty realistically um, up until the end over there. But, um... I mean, he was also used sparringly, which is not something you want to see in a Halloween movie. You don't want to see a Halloween movie, you know, the, with, and anything. You don't want to see a Halloween movie that's the third movie in the fucking trilogy that, you know, wait a minute. No, fuck. I'm not reviewing Halloween Kills. I'm reviewing Halloween Ends. Apologies, yo. Sincere apologies. I confuse these fucking... Fuck these movies. They're not numbered anymore. That's the thing, you know? I'm saying, you don't want the third movie in the trilogy, you know, Halloween ends, not kills, Halloween ends, to be one hour and 50 minutes of, you know, one hour and 50 minutes long, but only have, like, 30 minutes of Michael Myers in it. It's like, hey, what the fuck have you done with the other fucking one hour and 20 minutes? You know, what are we doing? What the fuck are we watching? Someone else is what we're watching. Yeah, you know. This third chapter didn't feel like a third chapter, like the final movie in a trilogy. It felt like an origin story that was to set up a spin-off or something, you know? And it doesn't. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, the daughter of... Is, is it, dude, this movie can't have it both ways. This movie cannot have, you know, fucking Michael Myers be both a myth... You can't have people in this town be so terrified of Michael Myers and, you know, like his name with like such fear and reverence or whatever that they harass Laurie Strode and shit. But then at the same time, have the, the kids of the town treated like a joke. You know, like, oh, Boogie Man's coming to get you. Woo. Just pick a fucking lane, Danny McBride. Shit. Uh, he didn't direct this. It was directed by a guy named uh, David Gordon Green. He directed this. 
But god damn, dude, this movie in the beginning was so weird. Like, oh, I'm gonna get into that in the spoilers, but damn, man. Yeah, anyway, that's the non spoiler section, you know. Uh, 7.2 out of 10. Uh, you know, that's what I'm gonna give it. The music was good, it has some great visuals, some pretty good kill, pretty solid kills, and the cast was pretty well cast for this role. They played their roles pretty well, whether it was Lori being the seemingly protective mother the protective mother who just wants the best but at the same time like it, i don't know the thing is i think there were moments where this character was done well but it was the character was nonsensical so yeah even if the character's done well it's still hampered by the very character being nonsensical that it's just like you know doesn't it works but doesn't quite work that's this movie in a nutshell it works but doesn't quite work Anyway, that's it. 7.2 out of 10. And now we move on to the spoiler filled section. So, yeah, get ready. All right, let's go. Stabby, stabby, stabby. Let's go. Let's kill some motherfuckers. I mean, like, come on. Let's go kill something. It's been too long, and I'm way out of practice. Like, that's pretty much Michael Myers when he finally decides to kick it into gear. Like, he's like, at the third act of this movie. Okay, let's set the tone. I mean, this movie begins not with Michael Myers, not with Laurie Strode. It doesn't even pick up, like, at the same, you know, run about the same time as the, the events of the last movie. It's set in 2019. There was talk that it would, there would be a time jump. What they meant was they would be a one year time jump, not like, oh, it's been five years between the movies because, you know, pandemic and whatnot. Like, that's what I was thinking. I thinking like, OK, how are you going to have this horror movie during a pandemic? You're going to address the pandemic and set after the pandemic? Nope. The last movie was set in 2018. This movie is just set in 2019. So we're good on that. Regard. So, yeah, they got that going for it. And. It opens with this guy Corey and this little kid. This little this little shit of a kid. Like just this this kid does a bunch of shit in the movie and you're just like like you little shit. I'm glad you fucking died. Like just yeah, but I'm pretty sure they wrote this kid to be an absolute terror so that you didn't feel bad when he died. Like just Corey was just a normal dude when all this shit went down. He just kid sit it was just a dude babysitting for this family it's like rich family and they're sitting there watching um some I think the thing they're watching the thing and it's like oh and he's like oh maybe this isn't appropriate for a kid your age he just goes like yes it is like like no nah, i'm not afraid you're afraid because you know that little kid response whatever and he the kid, then Corey suggests you know let's go play hide and seek you know like just you know, let's do kid stuff, and it's like, you know, you go, like, like you go, play. it's like, fuck that, you know, like, I'm like, whoa, this kid just say fuck that, and then he calls him, uh, like, an ass boy babysitter, I'm just like, what the, f what the fuck, what the fuck kind of shit is this, what the hell is going on here, what would you, who you, yeah, if, I'm just saying though, man. If that be me, if that be me, and some little shit call me an ass poor babysitter, like, just, no, I'm whooping your ass. That's not even, like, I do not care that your parents are gonna fire me or whatever. Like, that's the worst they can do. Fire me. But I'm still whooping your ass. Like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to, man? I'm like, this is, like, it would straight up turn into that scene in Scarface with, like, Tony and the phone. He's, like, arguing on the phone. And then he just goes, like, hey, hey, who, do, who, who the fuck do you think you're talking to, huh? You motherfucker. And, like, only in this kid's kid, you would be the phone. Yes. You would be the fucking phone. And I'm Tony Montana. I got something for your ass, man. Just know that. Shit. That's way cringe. That sounded way cringy, but anyway, moving on. The kid ends up locking the dude in the attic. The dude must have been claustrophobic or something, because he was freaking the fuck out on the other side of that door. And then the kid started laughing. He got pissed off. Thing is, the kid had run off and, you know, laid a trap for him that he would stumble in with, like, the knife in his hand, like... They planted the idea that oh Michael Myers is still out there and things and that bugged the hell out of me. Michael Myers is still out there and no one is looking. What the fuck? A serial killer 
who broke out of an insane asylum, killed a bunch of people, and then vanished. And no one's looking. They didn't catch. He's still out there. And nobody fucking out here looking for him. Like, seriously, how do you have the town move on to the point that they're making light of the situation? But at the same time, not move on to the point that they're willing to fucking harass Lori Strode about like, you did this, you're fucking responsible. You know, you antagonized a dude who wasn't, who like men, who wasn't okay, who like, I don't know, fucking brain damage or whatever. And he broke out and he started killing people because of it. Like, you did this. You, What movie are you talking about? I saw the first Halloween. I know what fucking movie I'm, I watched. That is not what happened. What is this? What bullshit are you spouting now? What is this shit? Like, this is all your fault. Like, no, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. <laughs> I saw Halloween 2018. I even saw the original Halloween 2018. There was no antagonizing of a dude with brain damage. Like, Lori Strode didn't actively go looking for Michael Myers until he bust out of jail. Like. Dude, I mean, not jail, that not, not house, dude. He didn't go look, she didn't go looking for the man until he bust out of that not house. Also, this movie retcons the ending of the first Halloween to explain, like, oh, uh, this is how they caught Michael. It shows, like, I don't think the first movie did that. Shit, I don't think the first movie did that. The movie, the first movie never really explained how they caught Michael. Just know they did. That's all they got to say, you know. Just know that we did. And... You know, it's really... Loomis could have ended this years ago. I'm talking decades ago. What am I saying? Decades ago. He could have ended this decades ago. He was going to put a hole right in Michael's head, but this cop stopped him. The Wu Patton cop, he stopped him. And then decades later, he regrets the decision because he's like, I'm the one. He's like, now we got to kill him. You know, when he hit him with the car, he was like, I'm... And he, he thinks he's, you know, he's pretty much dead. Now he's like, no, I'm still going to blow this motherfucker's brains out. Step back. You know, like... Yeah, he, we we thought he was dead too, but he keeps coming back. Like well, we gotta make sure now, you know, we gotta blow his fucking head off. Was, even then, back then there was that mentality, but they didn't, you know, quite follow through. He he rose up and he bust out, busted out, you know. And then in the fucking the movie following that, the people beat him with sticks, which is dumb. You know, just, and he rose up. Killed him again. Killed Lori's daughter and vanished. That's another thing, man. Like, oh, I'm getting off topic. But the um, thing is, Lori's daughter dies. And nope, no one mentions that. No, I'm sorry, of, like, Lori and thing. Like, no one mentions that shit. It's like, you think the, the granddaughter would mention that shit? Like, dude, your, your mom was murdered by Michael Myers. You should be wanting him, like... You know, as much as Lori does, dude. Lori's best friends died, sure, and she lost a daughter. Can you blame her for being obsessed with Michael Myers? Can you, like, what the? F How does nobody give a shit for some sh some shit that happened a year ago? And yet, in the previous movie, Lori was obsessing over some shit that happened decades ago. The whole damn town was whipped into a frenzy over something that happened back in the 80s. And now, something that happened a year ago, it's that. This is attitude of, meh, it's nothing. And then another attitude of, like, you know, this still is haunting us. But not enough that we're willing to do much about it besides harass the victims. Because they're the only ones here. We can't exactly harass the dude who did it. He's gone. Only people left are the people that he affected. You know, like, this woman does not deserve, Lori Strode does not deserve people's scorn. She deserves, like, her empathy more than anything. She's the one that got away. Shit, you know, like, I don't know. Damn, like, this is random. Just so much randomness is going on here. Like, Lori Strode is now writing a book about how she survived and he's still out there this is not over why is everyone acting like he is dead he's still out there he got away they never found him why is everyone just acting like oh well he's gone now must be he's not in you know he's out of sight out of mind we're good we don't have to be afraid of michael myers anymore boogeyman ain't shit just <laughs> what is this bullshit man so yeah back to the kid 
there's this accident that occurs where the kid locks the guy in the, the room and he's like kicking at the door, just kicking at it, kicking at it, kicking at it. And the kid's parents walk into the, the house at the same time and they're up in the attic, like three stories up. So he kicks the damn door, it swings open, she hits the kid in the face, knocking him right back off the ledge, down, down, down the fucking spiral staircase. He's dead. Splat. Right on the fucking floor in front of his parents. And they're like, no. I'm sitting there like, oh shit, this looks bad. Nobody's going to believe this shit. This looks bad because they walked in as the guy was yelling at the kid like, I'm going to kill you. Like, just, this is bad, bro. This looks terrible. Holy fuck. Why this? Why do I have to Oh, this is gonna look bad, dude. This kid's going away forever, dude. You killed a kid. Like, they're gonna think you threw him off the thing. Like, and all the evidence is gonna suggest you did. But no. Apparently, he got off on an aggravated, what, aggravated manslaughter charge. It wasn't a homicide. Obviously, it wasn't a homicide. It's like, believably speaking, he had no motive. Sure, he had opportunity went up, but no real motive to speak of. So, yeah. And just I, that I can think of. That's how I got away. There was no motive. And even the dad was like, I didn't believe that he would willingly hurt anybody. So just, yeah, there was that. But then later in the movie, the mom like comes across him at the bar. There's so many moments in this thing where you just happen to come across the out of this entire town. You just continuously run into the biggest assholes you can find. Just... Jesus, later that leader that's like, you think you could just come out of here, take off your little mask and have fun with your little friends? It's like, I gotta wake up, you know, with knowing my son is dead and his kid is walking free. It's like, you killed him, I know it. Like, that was an accident. Like, he even said to her, it was an accident. That was an accident. Like, I don't know how many times someone can say it. You can't say it enough times because even, even if it was, it wouldn't matter. Her son is still dead. She's still feeling that you still got to deal with all that so yeah i have i feel sorry for in that regard but damn dude, just if you really believe that he killed your son you're actively anti that's another thing i do not understand this like you truly believe that this person is a killer who willingly killed somebody and you actively go to them to try and piss them off are you fucking dumb and then I remembered, wait, this is the same town of people who found out where Michael Myers was and they came at him with sticks. This is the same town of people who, rather than calling back up and getting help to deal with Michael Myers, the guy that everyone's afraid of, decided, no, I'm going in alone. Or no, we can take this guy. Just the three of us. You know, one person who knows how to use guns, and two people who don't know how to use guns, one of which ends up blowing her own fucking face off. Yeah, and I remembered, I was just thinking, like, are these people fucking dumb? And every time I asked myself that, I just wound up answering my own question with, well, this is Haddonfield, so, yeah, they fucking are. Just... <sighs> yep. Seriously, man, there's this group of kids that harass this dude, and uh, this jock motherfucker, I don't know he's a jock, really, we don't know anything about them other than they're fucking bullies, and like, they're just pieces of shit all around, you know, like, just, we don't know anything about them other than that, this is one guy in the fucking letterman jacket, a guy with a mullet, this black chick, and then this other chick who's seemingly nice and doesn't want any part of it, but tags along with them anyway. So she's an asshole by association. But then goddamn, man, they're just there for the purpose of being, hey, we need some dipshits for, the, you know, to be absolute dipshits. So that, you know, when he kills them, we can be like, yeah, finally, you know, we need some people like that that aren't a part of the organization. Okay. okay, the underlying thing I want to say about these people is... Dear assholes who don't take no for an answer, no is an answer. Just because it wasn't the answer you wanted to hear does not make it any less of a fucking answer. Jesus, man. 
this whole thing starts because like hey, they're like hey, hey dude can you like you know we want to get some beer we don't have any id could you like go inside and get us some beer and he's like no like excuse me what do you mean no like no thanks what the fuck do you mean what do you mean no he's a grown-ass man and he's like no like he walked away and he's like no no i don't think we could he's like like no 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 and they keep pulling him aside. it's like fuck these people are annoying no is not an answer anymore what the fuck no means no. Jeez, people have been saying that since the fucking 90s, 80s. Like, no means no. Take a fucking hint. Jeez, man. Ugh, anyway, it just fired me more than anything. This fucking Letterman jacket motherfucker, mullet man, the one black chick, and the redhead. <laughs> thinks the redhead was seemingly nice but tags along with them anyway that one friend who's not like the others but tags along anyway you know just it's like fuck them so like they they realize who he is and they pass him some more like so what you're like you some you're sort of like ah you're a pedo you know you you kill kids like what you're gonna kill us next and then he's so pissed off that he fucking crushes the milk pot the chocolate milk bottle in his hand fucking up his own hand if that wasn't an indication to get the fuck out of there i don't know what the fuck he is dude like they treat this dude like he's a teenager like i think he is i'm not entirely sure <laughs> but he's definitely older than them i know that much like they react to him like he's a fucking same age as them he's not he's not he's a good man Jesus, dude, like, what the, what the, what, what, like, are you fucking, and then I remember, oh, wait, this is Haddonfield, like, the dude who plays me, like, 25 years old, I mean, come the fuck on, how is, like, how do you, use a bunch of kids just treat this 25-year-old man like he's one of them, he's not one of them, he will fuck you up, he does later on, but still, dude, like, what the, what the, fuck? ah, Ah, moving on. So they that's when he meets Lori, you know, she like yeah, gives him a knife to slash the tires and they leave. Um, he gets his hand pissed up and he meets Lori's daughter. <clears throat> and they hit it off immediately. When I say immediately, I mean immediately. They hit it off right in there. She invites him to a party, you know, later on they he gets him a little mask, they have some they have a fun time and they bond over her like busted muffler you know like just like you know he's like oh i could totally fix that you know it's an easy fix you know whatever she drives down you know he says oh, i'll get working on the muffler and he's like i don't care about the muffler I just came here to see you it's like oh she patched his hand up they chatted and now they're all lovey-dovey in the time span of less than a day it's kind of cute not gonna lie it is kind of cute you know it's just Dude, like slow the fuck down. At least give it a day. Don't be like, oh, this all happened one day. Bam. They in love. Like, no, 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 no. Give it a day or something. Spread this shit out. Dude. We don't know how much. I don't know how much time passes in these things until they actually show. Like it is now October thirty first. You know, this would be helpful if I knew what day it was when the film started. But sure, whatever. There was a point when I was sitting in the theater watching and just thinking to myself, wait. Why was it, why doesn't the movie just start here? Did we really need that prologue of the dude and committing manslaughter? What was that for? To show like he's capable of murder or whatever? Anyway, after the party, dude freaks out after running into that woman's mother. Him and excuse me, Lori's granddaughter have an argument, and it ends with you know him just walking off by himself. He's walking to the bridge. I assume he's walking home, or walking back to the scrapyard, or. Maybe he lives at the scrapyard. I'm not entirely sure, but like, yeah, yeah. So he's going off back to the scrapyard. And he, these kids come across him again. Like, what the fuck? Also, before that, there was this scene at the scrapyard where they saw the, the, the fucking Letterman jacket dude. He rocks up. I mean, his dad, with his dad in the car. And the dad tells the guy, like, yeah, we need, we need you. Like, they had a bit of an accident. Because my idiot son can't, like, doesn't, uh, was driving three miles on a flat tire because he doesn't know how to fix a tire. Like, you have a car, dumbass. Shouldn't that be something you should 100% know how to do? Like, fixing a fucking tire? 
Isn't that one of the basic things you need to know about, about a car before you like, you know, go out driving it? What if you run it, you get a flat? That's the thing you think about. What happens if you get a flat? You know, like just, dude, this kid is dumb. Just, uh, not only is he like, uh, whatever. Boy, what do I expect? He lives in Haddon Fields. It's just, uh, he's friends with a guy who has a mullet. That's right away. And I'm not talking like uh, a business in the front, party in the back, mullet. I'm talking a proper, like, redneck mullet. Like, like this, he was looking like some Tiger King, Miley Cyrus, chick from the Antwoord m- m- fucking mullet. <laughs> Fuck that mullet, man. <laughs> Piece of shit, man. Dude, I don't. I actually like my service about it. Works on her, but goddamn, everyone else with that kind of mullet just looks fucked up. Like it's some old tiger king shit, man. Damn, dude. Like, what? What are you trying to say? Giving this kid this moment, like, is the is the, is he like modern day Joe Exotic and Letterman jacket and him and Letterman jacket get it on when nobody's looking? Cause I don't think that that black chick and them were girlfriends and he damn sure wasn't with the redhead chick she really spoke to him other than to ask him to stop or whatever so what out of this whole friend group is fucking tiger king and letterman fucking are they fucking they together is that what y'all try to say make us think of tiger king and like his husbands and shit and then she like well he's really tight with this dude so well that that must be what they're going for like just god damn this sounds incredibly homophobic it's not it really isn't i'm not trying to be homophobic this is just fuck that moment man shit so anyway blah they come across the dude again and they toss him off a bridge and ish, these bullies just had a hard on for being bullies, dude. These are two kids harassing a grown man with a knife. These are two kids harassing a grown man who has a knife. Like, and they react to it like it's plastic or something. Like, oh yeah, a knife. Get the fuck out of here, man. Like, and the one dude tosses him over. And then this movie pulls in, I know what you did last summer so fucking hard, dude. Just... <laughs> The guy goes over and they're like, like you, you tossed him. No, I didn't. He fell. Like, uh, like you. What do you mean you fell? You pushed him. Like, nah, he fell. And that's what. That's what I'm. That's my story. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, just fucking like Jean. What's his name? Jean Philippe or something. Whatever. His the guy that he played on that show. Even he wasn't that much of an asshole. Like, he was just a realist, dude. Like, he was a guy, he had a future, and nothing was going to jeopardize it. So he had to be an asshole. He did not actively want to be an asshole. He wasn't going out of his way to be a dick. God damn. He was a dick because the situation calls for it. Sometimes you need that. You need, like, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in Patch Adams suddenly. Like, sometimes you need a prick. You know, like, just, you, you gotta be a prick. But that was in relation to being a doctor, not a human being. Anyway, <clears throat> so the kid falls down the hole, gets scooped up by Michael Myers and dropped in the fucking sewer. And then when he wakes up, he like stumbles around for a bit, like trying to find his way out. And that's ah! oh my god! But, like Michael Myers has got him by the throat, and he's choking the shit out of him, and he looks dead in his eyes, like straight right through the mask into the man's eyeballs. They lock eyes like. Like John Cena and that dude in Blockers when that guy came while he was looking straight into John Cena's eyes. Like, they, like, bonded on that level. Like, just like, <laughs> that was fucked up. Like, this dude is like, got this, like, 25-year-old guy by the throat, locking eyes with him. Meanwhile, on the other side of the wall, he's jerking what's left of his burnt dick with... Actually, he's just jerking his dick with what's left of his crispy, crispy fried hand. Just, dude, like, like, just, oh, fuck's sake, man. Anyway, moving on. He, he, he's like, like they lock in eyes, and there's this like flash of all the the memories of dude accidentally killing the kid, and he lets him go, and it's like a kindred spirit thing, you know, like. Like, whatever evil was in him has now 
latched on to this kid. It's like, oh, I sense you have a similar evil within you that I have within me. Let me let you go. The guy goes free and runs into this bum. This random bum who's just like, you know, a lot of people come in there, don't go out. Why do you let you go, huh? Why do they let you? What makes you special? And he pulls a knife on him and says, get back in there and get me that mask. Like, you can tell this motherfucker's crazy. They struggle and he kills him. So the Corey kills this bum and he runs back home. You know, cleans himself up, stands in the mirror, like in his underwear, starts breathing heavily, moving back and forth. Like, uh, uh, like you can tell he's really freaking the fuck out. Like, just not knowing how to properly process this. But then once he comes out of the bathroom, it's like he's a totally different dude, you know? He doesn't have that walk around with that same hunched overness that he used to. Like, you know, he doesn't look near things anymore. Look down, you know, more like he used to. He looks at shit now, you know? He goes to the chick's house, you know? He goes to the granddaughter's house. And I gotta learn her name at some point. <laughs> I got my name is so for it though. So he goes to her house and he apologizes like, hey, you know, uh, I fucked up. I'm sorry. And please just go for a walk a bit and talk. Allison. Yeah, that was her name. Allison. And they do, but then as they leave, like, Lori sees something. She sees something. Like, it's in the eyes. You know, the, the eyes. They always give me away. <laughs> Like, that's kind of what's going on. It's like, out of the window, she saw something in him that she remembers seeing in Michael Myers. And that's, and that's you know, that's, that's, that's some serious red flags right there. This guy is like, uh, I need to speak to your daughter. Hey, can we just go for a walk? But, you know, just like, and then you see this, like, tinge of evil in his eyes. And you're just thinking, what the hell? What's going on here? Like, this, that was... That was weird, right? Only you don't have anyone to ask. You don't have anyone to turn to and be like, that was weird, right? Or, did, hey, did, did you see that? No, no, there's none of that. But yeah, um, this, this, I meant surviving a serial killer must work differently in movie. This movie's fucking it, lore works differently movie to movie. That's my biggest gripe with this. This movie's lore works differently movie to movie. It's like the, it's like the movies retcon themselves each time they come out. The, this new set of movies. The previous movie wanted to act like the last 40 years of Halloween movies have all been canon. You know, Halloween 1 all the way through to Halloween H2O. Yeah, let's stop there. All those movies have been canon. When they haven't. There haven't been any freaking Halloween movies. It was just the first one. Jump straight to 2018. And then the second one. And yet in the second one, they were like, Oh, he's terrorized this town for 40. No, he hasn't, motherfucker. He went on one kill spree and then got locked up and that was it. You know, like, I would hardly call that terrorizing the town for 40 years. And you're telling me nobody's died since then of un- in an unnatural way. Nobody's murdered anybody. Nobody's snapped and just started capping co-workers or whatnot. None of that. This town is that fucking peaceful without Michael Myers, but at the same time, that fucking haunted. You kidding me right now? You're gonna have to be a happy, quaint little town in, in you know, uh, Midwest America or whatever the fuck you are, and yet at the same time be terrorized by this figure, like this specter, this embodiment of evil that is Michael fucking Myers. You know, you can't have it both ways, Danny McBride. Pick a lane. Damn. I'm sorry that was messed up. Why do I keep shouting out Danny McBride? You wrote this shit with David Michael Green. David Gordon Green, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Gordon Green. Keep messing that name up. <laughs> Gordon Green. Yeah, man. Like, just pick a lane here, dude. Shit. So he, the guy tells her straight up, I killed somebody. And she stops. And then they talk, and somewhere from that conversation, they went from walking to to this diner, and next thing you know, they're just having friendly conversation. Like, ladies, did you, Allison, did you forget that man over there just told you he killed someone like an hour ago? Did that, like, little revelation just mean nothing? You thought he was making that shit up? 
and then this cop comes around, tries to ask Allison, like, hey, uh, it's been a while since you called me. Totally ignoring that dude is sitting there. You're like, it's been a while since you called. What's going on? Thought you like, liked me or whatever. Like, just, and you know, at first, I thought that too. I'm like, really? She's got a thing with this guy? This rando cop looks like he's old enough to be her dad? Is who she's with? Like, turns out, no. Only he thinks that. And, uh, um, but yeah, there was, um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so, like, the kid, like, Corey and them, he stands up to this dude and is like, you know, after Allison tells the guy, like, nah, I'm, 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 I'm not interested. And he was like, well, in case you change your mind, we're all going down this point. like, I'm not, and she's like, again, she's like, nah, I'm, I'm good. And, and the dude is like, hey, just want to, you know, in case, you, if you do change your mind. She's like, she's fat, she's good. I, like, damn, dude, when, I feel, I feel for the dude in that moment. I do feel for the guy. You got this asshole pestering your girl or the girl that you with, and he's acting like you ain't even there. He's continuing to pester her, even though she says, you know, nah, we're good. Like, get the, get the fuck out. That's what people do. You can't polite. The world has changed, man. John Doe said it best. You can't just tap people on the shoulder anymore. You know, you can't just tap people on the shoulder anymore and just tell them you have something to say. You can't just tell someone something one time and then it goes through anymore. People are fucking dumb in this movie. You gotta really hammer the point home if you want to. You know, get something across. So, you know, after the initial stare down, the cop follows Corey to the hole where he met Michael. And he basically, the Corey basically leads him into a trap. Where, like, he and Michael, like, double team this guy. Initially, like, when Michael tries to kill this dude, it's, like, slow and lumbering. And he moves like a dude who's had to put up with, like, I don't know, like a dude who survived a fire and got his ass beat by an entire town. You know, he moves like, damn, he's been feeling the course of these movies, you know, like he hasn't, you know, like he hasn't been recuperating or nothing. He's just been convalescing, you know, like just in a vegetative state. He's like an old man, basically. He's like, I'm assuming in his 50s or 60s right now. Like, that's what I assume. I don't know for sure, like, because this is, yeah, he's the dude who plays him in his 60s, so I was, it would be correct in assuming that Michael himself is in his 60s. A 60-something-year-old dude lumbering around killing folks. So, it stands to reason he's not as nimble as he used to. He's pretty fragile as Percy, given all the shit he's been through. He's been shot. He's been stabbed. He's been set on fire. Half his mask is burnt off. His hands burnt off, like his fingers missing. Just, and it isn't until he kills this guy that he act. I mean, he proper delivers the finishing blow that he starts shaking, you know, like he's getting off on this. And then he straightens out, totally rightens his posture and everything. Now all of a sudden he's not frail anymore. He's not so old. He doesn't move like some old dude. He's like. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, that was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I know I make the parallel that Michael Myers like, gets off on this shit, but in all honesty, dude, it would fit. What else is he getting off on? We know he ain't getting off on the ladies. He spends too much time killing them to even get even the semi or whatever, and he can get off on... Like, even when he was a kid, dude, he killed his sister when she was buck-ass nude after banging this guy. You know, just At least that's how it played out in the original. I don't know how it played out in this retcon shit. They've retconned so much, I don't even know what is canon anymore. Whatever. Man, we are tilt your head, moving on. Tilt the head, moving on. And that's what he does. He does that slow fucking head tilt that he does in every goddamn damn movie uh, anyway whew. so the dude so him and Corey they go to this house this rich doctor's house and this guy's been an asshole he passed up Allison for a promotion 
and give it to her so-called friend who won't shut the fuck up even when allison points out that geez don't you ever just shut the fuck up you talk so damn much and then she's like yeah i know right like i just go on and on like, what the fuck are you getting the hits you talk too much do not respond to that with more talking shut the fuck up and she so they go to this guy's house and Corey kills the doctor, you know, puts a bag over his head, stabs him with the knife. And Michael comes in from the front door and he, like, gets a hold of that woman. Corey immediately, you know, since they have, like, a kindred spirit thing going on, takes off the bandage around his hand from when he cut himself with a bottle and he checks to see if it's, like, healed. It hasn't. He just feel like, damn, it's like killing people heals you. Like, why ain't it healing me? Like, what's going on? Like, what gives here? And, you know, they got, like, a team thing going on you know like um the closest thing i can compare it to is uh shucks shabalala and uh van van brennan i think his name is this other guy i'm i don't, I don't quite know what the name is but you know that there's a thing like um in this film i think it was called Sh uh shucks your country news yes that was the name it had, um, what's his name, Rob Van Vuren. Yeah, Rob Van Vuren. It said the reason like, he's in the film is because um, like, they needed somebody to take like a lot of the, take some of the hits because, you know, Chucks is getting too old to take like the hits when people don't react well to his thing. So I think this introduction of Corey as a secondary villain was done like, um, okay, we need somebody to go around killing folks all over the movie. And we can't have Michael doing it because he's old and he's not as mobile as he used to be. You know, he's not the killer he used to be, but he can still, you know, he can't believably have this 60-something-year-old man going from place to place to place, killing people like like it's like he did 40 fucking years ago. We can't do that. That's out of the realm of realism or whatever. We can't have a thing where it seems like he draws strength from killing people. We can do that, you know. We can do that, though. So, um, yeah, so now Corey and them go, him, they, they kill this dude. They kill the nurse. And then Michael goes back to his hole. Corey goes back to his, like, uh, romance with Allison. They ride on the bike. They fuck. They have these nice moments. Take these pictures. They're really good. The whole time, Lori Strode thinks this dude is fucking sus. And she's like, goes to, like, he moves out of his house. Oh, yeah, the dude's got a cliche as fuck overbearing mother who does not care that he is 25 years old. She still treats him like a fucking kid. You know, like, who is that you're talking to on the phone? It's like, oh, well, boys who don't get secrets, the boys who keep secrets don't get dessert. And then she ups and leaves, like, Jeez, lady, can you be a bigger fucking stereotype? What the hell? You kick him out of the house? Like, she kicks him out of the house, I think, because, like, he's got a girl now, and he's like, you know, like, he might want to leave. Like, do you seriously kick your son out of the house because he's got a girl now? Yet it, when Laurie goes to visit the woman, she's like, you know, you know, your, your granddaughter should be so lucky as to be with a boy like my boy. Like, he's such a good boy. Like, what the fuck? What is going on? Lady, pick a lane. There's so much shit going on in this movie. I'm just like, pick a lane here, man. God damn. Either she pick what? <laughs> Whatever, dude. So, ah, I'm going to jump ahead. Like, the kid starts living in the abandoned house of the family whose son he accidentally killed. You know, because they just ditch the fucking house they couldn't live there anymore this is the house where their son died i wouldn't expect them to live there anymore why would you want to live there anymore just i understand why they would move so yeah they move out and you know he's like squatting there now and he wakes up to hear like this tapping sound you know just turns out it's Laura Strode sitting in a chair you know like angled up so that she's rocking in it and the back of the chair is hitting the wall and it's making this tapping sound I'm just looking at this and even in the cinema I'm like did you seriously walk in here see him sleeping decide to pull up a chair right by the window and then lean back and like put it close enough to the window that you could lean back and the back of the chair would tap the thing and then you could just like suspend yourself in the air, tapping the thing like duck, 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 
while you talk and you like the whole time you talk you have this annoying repetitive sound in the background and then dude, it just looks like you did this because of what dramatic effect couldn't you doesn't you just being there create dramatic effect this is this is like this, <laughs> this doesn't make sense dude like just there's so much in this movie where I'm like this doesn't make any sense <laughs> There were so many moments I was sitting in the cinema looking at the screen, just squinting, going, that doesn't make any sense, but Brian, it just, I gonna keep shading Brian on this. He didn't write this movie by himself, so let me, let me, let me rephrase that. That doesn't make any sense, Green. Because like, the, the, the director gets most of the shade, so yeah, there he is, I'm giving him some of the shade. Spread the load. Seriously, man. Uh, throughout the movie there's been this asshole dj you know just like playing music asking stupid questions about like you know uh michael myers and like look, he's basically exploiting the situation to get not even views dude it's not a, some asshole on youtube this is some asshole on the radio he's basically exploiting the situation making light of people's traumas for reaction Everyone in this town is an asshole just to be an asshole. There's no real reason. And he comes across the dude like, oh, like he comes across Corey and Allison after they were like on his building. And he's like, oh, shit. You know, like, it's like, you're the guy who killed that kid, who killed that kid. And you're like one of the survivors. It was like, yeah, one of those like crazy survivors or whatever. And it's like, get the fuck, get off my property before I fuck y'all up. He's a piece of shit, basically. There's a reason shock jocks aren't a thing anymore. You know, they get kicked off the air or whatever. But this motherfucker doesn't because, oh, it's Haddonfield. And there's no other radio station. And apparently everyone listens to this one. You can tell there's no other radio station because everyone listens to this one damn station. So, yeah, he's an asshole. Let's run up the assholes in the movie. The four kids, uh... The guy on the, the the radio DJ, the radio station DJ, the cop, and you know that's I think that's about it. So after all this shit rolls up, like Corey and Allison make a plan, like we're gonna leave, you know, we're just gonna pack our bags, get on our bike, and leave. We're gonna finally put some distance between us and this town, us and these horrible memories or whatever. Lori gets into it with her grandmother, and she splits. Meanwhile, you know, she, like, just leaves. She doesn't leave with this dude yet. They haven't left yet. But she's, like, packed a bag, and she's, like, out of the house. Then, th- th- then, uh, the K- K- Corey decides, you know what? I need something from you. She goes to Michael. I mean, he goes to Michael and takes the dude's mask. There's initially a struggle, and I just remember seeing the thing in the cinema and going, Witness the epic struggle between Michael Myers and his new apprentice shot entirely through literal fucking tunnel vision because the camera stays in the damn tunnel and films from there. Meanwhile, you know, Corey and Michael are fighting from the other side. I guess it's a one take, you know, one shot, but goddamn, dude. If you only have one camera and you actively choose to film from that one terrible angle, does that really make it a one shot? The one shot of the camera moves, or like if not the camera moves, the characters like there's no, I don't know, man. Like just what the fuck is this? There's no other scene like this in the movies, so what was the point of all this? Was... Anyway, moving on, dude takes Michael's mask because he figures that's what he needs, you know. You know, he gets the mask, gets some boots and some overalls, and he goes a killing, goes around killing folk. He kills the guy at the radio station. He fucking smashes his head into the the, the radio station deck as the songs plays cause the radio escape. It's like, and he cuts the dude's tongue off and leaves it on the spinning record after he kills the guy. And each time the needle strikes the thing in the song plays it like each of those noises was the needle hitting the dude's tongue like what the fuck <laughs> what is this shit I'm like fucking finally finally 
You know, we see a guy in a fucked up mask and overalls going around killing folks. That's what I paid to say. Whew. Damn. Finally. It took an hour for a Halloween movie to Halloween. Anyway, so dude's going around killing folks. He kills them kids in great fashion. I'm pissed though that we didn't get to see that fucking, you know, Joe Exotic wannabe motherfucker's death. He was an off-screen death, and that annoys me. Yeah, the kids died because they were continuing to be assholes, dude. They died solely because, hey, look, assholes got an asshole, I guess. Plus, he did antagonize them this time because he actually wants them to follow him into the scrapyard into a trap so yeah he run this chick dressed climbing onto a gate to like hop out i think it's the black chick she got away she actually hopped the fence and ran like you were clear you were clean and clear you 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 were like ah you were out of here you were safe what the fuck are you doing running back you ran back just to die that's what you was doing lady you ran back just to die escaped to die another day only you didn't even bother with another day shit just delayed your death anyway so the, then the chick who was kind of nice and you know like not really kind of nice but like the chick was wasn't in on the bullying but you know didn't really do anything to stop it she tries hopping the fence too but then he used a truck to ram her and like sandwich her between the wheels you're like, she's stuck under, like, trapped under this fence between the front and the rear tire. She is not moving. You reverse that truck, you run her over. You move the truck forward, you run her over. She's fucking not going anywhere. And, you know, he kills her. He kills a black chick, you know, rips her neck, breaks her neck, kills a letterman guy. In a pretty creative way, he holds her down, holds the guy down. This motherfucker likes to talk, doesn't he? You know, he really likes to talk. He's a piece of shit. He really likes to talk. He holds him down, gets a blowtorch, and he uses it to like oh, roast this motherfucker's open mouth, like <laughs> just straight out burns like a dude who had a flare shot into his mouth. Hey, dude, I was sitting there like, yes. Fucking finally. This annoying motherfucker got killed. Finally. Shit. And in a pretty gruesome way. An inventive way that's never been before seen in this franchise. I'm cool with that. The guy at the radio station's dead. The kids are dead. Um, the dude's mom dies. So he goes back home and he kills his mom. You know, just stabs her. And he then kills the dad. Like the, his dad? Yeah, he kills his dad. Well, this big mechanic looking dude like yeah i don't remember how he kills him but he does i he i didn't wanna there's always one point even in the remake the robbery remake there was a point where i was just like okay i'm not with this anymore you killed this one dude i am not with this now it was when it was rob zombies halloween and michael killed danny Trejo's character the one dude who was nice to him throughout same thing in this fucking movie the one dude who was nice to him throughout, no questions asked, no strings attached, whatever. He was just nice to him, and he kills him. Like, oh no, he doesn't. The guy gets killed. Jesus Christ, he got killed by an accident that was totally fucking avoidable. Jesus, dude. Ugh. So Corey's been doing most of the killing this franchise, and you know Michael's been—I don't know what the fuck Michael's been doing—sitting in that cave, eating rats, jerking off to the thought of some twenty-something-year-old dude in his hands, just you know, I mean, having his hands on some twenty-something dude. I don't know, camera doesn't show, but like he doesn't have his mask on. Whatever he's been doing, he don't have his mask on, and then. Even there was a thing, it showed like, uh, I got the idea that it was the mask that he was drawing power from more than anything, because when dude took the mask off him, he laid there for a bit. Sure, like, he eventually got up, but like, he laid there for a bit, like, ah, uh, dude, like, all the kid did was tackle you to the ground, take the mask off you and run. He didn't beat you down much, you know, just like, you know, Michael Myers washed off worse. But like there he is just like laying there. I'm like, 
like, yo, it's, it's like when the like the Undertaker and the Urn or whatever, like around WrestleMania 11, I think, they took the Undertaker's Urn away during a match, and then he got beat down by King Kong Bundy. Normally, with the Undertaker, it was no matter how bad you beat him up, he would always get back up. It's like he would draw power from the Urn, but then he took the Urn away, and he was just laying there after he got beat up. And then when he did eventually get up, he looked like weak you know like he was struggling to stand or some shit you know i think that's how it works like he'll still get up you know but like he has to be within the vicinity of the mask or at least you know he has to be wearing the mask to fully get its power you know that's what i drew from this sequence you know like this whole thing because when cory puts on the mask he's killing people like myers is He's not taking damage, he's just killing folks. And then he goes to kill Lori. Lori, the movie make, tries to make you think like she's gonna commit suicide, but then you immediately know she doesn't because then the fucking, you see the, the blood that's supposedly from her splatter isn't blood, it's orange. It's like that goop inside jack o -Lantis. You can tell because she like spills some on the floor on purpose. And they zoomed in on it to make sure you see it, you know? And there was some shit like, hey, hey pay attention to that. You know, that's going to mean something. Like the bag in Tenet, you know, like we spent like, a, like some time focusing on the bag in Tenet. Because they wanted you to know like that that's going to mean something. Pay attention. And like Pay attention to that thing. That's going to come back later in the story. So she shoots this dude and he falls down the stairs. <laughs> stumbling down to the ground and then she like walks up to him stands right in front of him you know reveals that her gun is now empty she's unloaded her ammo into this dude and he's not like dying he's just standing there you know he's still feeling the power of the mask and everything and around about this she's like do it you came here to kill me so come on get up kill me at that point, like, Lori starts taunting the dude, like, you really think she would leave with someone like you? Come on, man. You really think she would just vamoose with a guy like you, dude? Come on. Normally, that always works, but expectation subversion. Instead, the dude says, if I can't have her, no one will. And he stabs himself. And then he falls back. And she's like, no, no. She pulls the knife out of his throat and then stands there. And at that moment, fucking Allison walks in. And she's like, "What have you done?" Lori drops it off. Like, "Oh shit!" Like, why do people do that? Why the hell do people do that? Why do people like grab, like, pull a knife out of somebody, and then upon seeing it in their hands, realize, "Oh shit, no!" Now it looks like I killed him. And like Lori just, and then Allison's crying, like, "What have you done? <laughs> you killed him!" And it's believable because you know, Duke called earlier and planted the idea in her mind, like, "Hey, your mom said she's gonna kill me," and you know, this chick is obsessed with death, and now here I lay stabbed in the throat with your mom holding the blade. It's believable that, you know, that this looks bad. This looks bad. This movie begins with something like, yo, this looks bad. And ends with something like, oh, this looks way worse than it is. This looks horrible. This, how things look sometimes matters way more than how they actually are. Anyway, so after dude gets stabbed, Allison leaves in tears. And like, Laurie's just laying there. Michael Myers shows up tries to get his mask mask the cory dude like springs back to life despite being shot despite having a knife that was in the store a minute ago despite believing all over the place he like you know reaches for the dude he's like no no he doesn't say no 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 but like you know michael chokes this motherfucker out just like puts both hands on him and chokes him to death and then right before breaking his neck i like, guess he could only you know hold it in for so long <laughs> anyway moving on so he then Laurie and him have this fight in the kitchen this awesome fight in the kitchen that's why largely the reason why this movie got a 7.2 it was originally supposed to get like a 6 point something then I'm like, nah that kitchen fight was awesome 7.2 they fight they fight they fight they fight 
It's the Laurie and Michael show. <laughs> this is the show we've been waiting for, y'all. Laurie Strode, Michael Myers, get it on in the kitchen. <laughs> she stabs this, she stabs this motherfucker like he owed him, like she, like he owed her money, man. Like he stabbed him in his hand. She stabbed his other hand, and then like, dude, it seemed as if she had, and then she slashed his fucking throat. He's bleeding the fuck out. She stabbed him. She smashed his throat. There was a callback to the first movie where she goes to like the, the kneading thing and she tries to use it to stab him. <laughs> Only he turns the tables and he stabs her right in the fucking ear with it. It's like, ah, now you know how it feels. Like, ah, gotcha, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, this movie's third act is awesome. Like, man, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, brother. This movie's third act, bro. <laughs> it's dope. It's dope, yeah. Uh, Allison comes in as it seems like, even though Michael's laying there fucking bleeding to death, seemingly, you know, uh, hand pinned, neck slashed, he rips his fucking hand out of the blade and uses it to choke out Lori. And she's like, do it, do it. Like, you know, it's just like, a, like, just fucking do it. You know, put us both out of our miseries. Like, just, and Alice comes in like, no. And she, I think she hacks dude's hand off. You know, that's what I think happened. And at that point, he lay in there dead. They call the cops. Cops come in. They see what happened. See dead Corey. They see Michael. And they're like, yo. We need to finish this now. We need to be 100% sure he is not coming back. You know, we need to make certain. We can't just stab him a couple times and call it a day. We tried that. It didn't work. We can't lock him in a flaming house and hope he'll burn us to death. We tried that. It didn't work. We need to, we can't just fool him with a couple bullets and call it a night. We tried that. It didn't work. We need to make sure there is nothing left of him to come back. So... They strapped him the hood of a car, and this like Texas cop who was in the last, who was in the first Halloween movie, he rocks up again, and like you know the other cops in the Haddonfield are like, this isn't how we do things, and he just rocks in with his one line in the whole movie, and he says, it is tonight. Like just <laughs> that comes at the end with this like action movie line. It's like it is tonight. It is tonight. They strap him to the roof of Alice's car. Drive him down to the scrapyard. The whole town shows up, right? The whole damn town shows up. And I mean everybody, I mean everybody. We got car after car after car of people showing up to see this shit. And they fucking, they take him, they chuck him into this big ass, like, grinder that we've been seeing a while. This, like, uh, steel grinder. They used to, like, grind up car parts and shit. <laughs> Yeah, every time we went to the scrapyard, they panned, they did like a panning shot where we saw the grinder. And in the afternoon, panning shot where you saw the grinder. They made sure you saw that grinder in every establishing shot for the junkyard. Because they were like, remember that. It is going to play a factor later in the story. And they grind the fuck out of this dude. You know, they grind him up in pieces. There's, like, he's all ground up. There's nothing left. Nothing left for him to come back with. Nothing left to resurrect, man. Michael Myers is finally, thankfully, D-E-A-D, -E dead. Duh. And now, everybody can finally fucking move on. They were already moved on a little bit in the beginning of the movie, but they can fully move on. All the idiots and assholes in this town are dead. We can properly move on now. Allison can leave town and start a life of her own elsewhere. Lori Strode can finish her book and have a life with Sheriff Will Patton. I don't remember his name, but yeah. I like that Lori Strode gets a happy ending. It's rare that you get a horror movie franchise that it has a definitive ending. It's even rarer you get a horror movie franchise that has a definitive happy ending. So yeah, I give the movie props for that. I give the movie props for like giving Laurie a happy ending, definitively killing off Michael Myers with no chance of coming back until, you know, and then you have like, you know, uh, 
<laughs> the actual actress herself saying like, oh, I am not going to come back to do another Halloween movie. This little contract, I signed a contract and everything. It's like, like boo-ha-ha or boogity-boo or boo. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the fuck she's saying at the end of it, but it's just absurd shit, man. Like just, if you saw this and you like, what the, if you saw this, you laugh. I know I did when I saw it. Like I saw this, I was like, I laughed. I can't even, I couldn't, I could not use straight face doing this. Like I could what the hell? <laughs> I'm gonna try and find what she said. I'm seriously gonna try and find this. <laughs> what the hell? It was so weird, dude. Like, damn, man. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, shit. That was, um, Halloween ends. The final movie in the Halloween reboot franchise. Yeah, yeah. Whew, and it was quite the experience, dog. I'll give it that much. It was definitely quite the experience. Jamie Lee Curtis got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know, like, I'm happy for that. You know, she deserved it, man. All these years, after all these years, I'm surprised she didn't already have it. I'd, I'm so glad she got what she deserved in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I'm glad she got to close out this franchise on a high. You know, she got one over on her oppressor basically we don't see like she was the final girl of this franchise franchises go through final girls and final dudes or whatever with each installment like either the villain moves on to a new victim or like the villain from the pre the victim from the previous movie just dies or whatever you know that's what happens normally but this time around i'm glad that you know they stuck to the guns and gave Lori the big gave Lori the w she got over in the end, you know, I'm glad about that. That made me like, smile, you know. It said, <laughs> um, oh, uh, I, Jamie Lee Curtis, Queen of Scream, daughter of Janet Lee and Tony Curtis, mother of Lindsay Lohan. Okay, <laughs> didn't know that bit. Hereby sweareth under penalty of perjury that Halloween Ends 2022 will be the last movie I will ever appear in for all time across all sequels and most voices enforceable by the police department of Haddonfield, Illinois. May God have mercy on us all. Baba Booey! <laughs> I can't read that and not think of fucking Kung Fu Panda or something like Baba Booey. Like, just like, I just, I just hear like that pole voice of like, like the music rising, like, Wah! and then Poe just says, Baba Booey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that sounds fucking. <laughs> ah, shit. Ooh. Anyway, um. So yeah, this has been the SW Experience reviews, and I've just finished capping off reviewing Halloween Ends, the 2022 finale to the Halloween franchise. Yeah. Until they re remake this motherfucker 20 years from now, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, that's all I got to say so far. This has been the SW Experience Reviews. I have been the Shogun. And uh, 7.2 out of 10 knives. That's what I give this movie. 7.2 out of 10 knives. So, yeah. See y'all.